Optimus Nova burners are great burners, but unfortunately, the stud on the bottom that holds the burner often shears off. Here's another one from a customer that I'm working on, and I've done quite a few of these, and I'll show you how I do it. This is an early Nova, and that's where the problem seems to be. Most of the later ones were corrected by the factory. You can see that one's been sheared off. Because the repair involves silver brazing, we want to disassemble everything on the burner. The handy multi-tool that comes with the stove allows you to disassemble everything on the burner. First you want to remove the spindle, and while you have the spindle out, take a look at the two O-rings that are on the spindle to make sure they're in good shape. Replace them if they're not. Next, remove the jet and the magnetic cleaning needle that's inside the burner. My camera ran out of battery, so I'll show you what it looks like once I've gotten it out. Yep, that's it. I've mounted the burner on my vertical mill on the table here. It's securely held so that nothing bounces around. That's a good thing. I use a four millimeter diameter end mill to mill off the old part of the stud. Once it's flat, I recenter the 4 millimeter end mill to the center of where the stud should be. And I bore a, oh, I don't know, two and a half to three millimeter deep socket, four millimeters in diameter. Here's what that socket looks like once it's bored. That's going to allow us to set the new stud in there when we silver braze it. Now the actual thread size for the stud on the bottom of the Nova burner is M6 by 1.0. I've bought a stainless steel bolt and I'll be cutting that off. It'll make it so that we can use the original uh, multi-tool for all the uh, work we need to do with our Nova. Just cut it off with a hacksaw and you're good to go. I use a couple jam nuts to install this on my lathe and I'll clean up that end and machine a four millimeter diameter tenon on the end of the stud with a small recess in the end. The completed stud fits nicely with a loose but snug fit and that will allow silver brazing filler to flow into the joint. I've taken the parts and bead blasted them with glass beads so it's nice and clean and here I'm taking some India ink to mask off areas I don't want the silver brazing filler to flow into. This is just a common artist brush that uh, you can pick up at the beginning of the school year every year and really cheap in packages of about 10. Now the India ink has been allowed to dry completely and now I'm going to go ahead and use this flux. High temperature black flux is what you want to use if you're connecting stainless steel to brass. It's a high temperature flux and it works really well with the nickel bearing silver brazing filler. So my next step is to make a small ring of the silver braze filler. This is Harris Safety Silve 50N and I believe it's a 16th inch diameter. I'm gonna just use some needle nose pliers to crank around a nice little circle of silver braze filler, clip it off, and then settle it down around the stud. 
once it's on, I can just crimp it to make a nice snug fit. Now I'm adding a little flux onto the silver brace filler so that I make sure everything's good and fluxed. And that's what it looks like when it's all done. All ready to braise now. Now for brazing, I use a Burnsomatic 4000 torch head and it's connected to just a big five gallon cylinder of propane. And propane works just fine for brazing. You don't need to have oxyacetylene. You don't need to have um, map gas or any of that other stuff. So I'm just going to heat this up and allow the flux to flow out and then eventually the silver braze you can see is now turning liquid and flowing into the joint. Okay, we'll let that cool down and then do some more bead blasting to clean off the flux and I ran a dye down there to clean out some of that extra silver braze material. Here I've gone ahead and shortened it and bead blasted it one last time. This is its final size. It's nice and tapered at the end. And this is what the finished repair looks like on the Nova burner. Reassembly is the opposite of disassembly. I added this carbon fiber preheat pad to the base of the burner. And here it is running. You'll notice that it's running on an isobutane cylinder that's another little trick I do with an adapter there that you can see on that Nova. I'm going to do another video on that. Stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. Please link and subscribe.